You notice that each of the uh, Puss in Boots movies that I covered so far, um, or yeah, the, all three of the Toei Puss in Boots movies were directly followed by um, yeah, an X-rated adult movie. Um, yeah, especially like a pretty notable adult movie. Because, yeah, this one in particular has been getting uh, quite a few reviews lately. Um, yeah, like uh, from uh, Saber Spark, that's a user who I uh, watch. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, anyway. So, uh, I guess I'll get right into the, uh, well... First, I'll talk about the background behind this movie, so, uh... So, yeah, it's a pornographic film, and it's animated by former animators who worked for Disney and Hanna-Barbera. So, yeah. Apparently, they were, like, mostly women, so I guess they felt underused in those uh industry or in those companies so they just yeah so this is a solution make a uh pornographic film with a bunch of naked ladies Ugh. um so yeah it's former animators from disney and hanna-barbera and uh well, let's just say in the animation, um, the Hanna-Barbera side shows a lot more than the Disney side. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> so the story is um, Mother Goose is, uh, is uh, by the way, it's like the framing device is like live action, so yeah. So said framing device is that Mother Goose is going to trial for uh, her, yeah, her obscene stories because it, because I don't know she's recently been telling the quote true versions of uh, of her uh, fairy tales, although yeah the uh, fairy tales and in question are Jack and the Beanstalk, Cinderella, and Little Red Riding Hood, none of which are Mother Goose, because Mother Goose is supposed to be nursery rhymes, um, you know, fairy tales are by, like, the Brothers Grimm and stuff, so <laughs> I guess they should be on trial, maybe for, yeah, their stories about ladies cutting off their toes and all sorts of dark crap like that. Anyway, um, so yeah, Mother, either way, Mother Goose is telling these stories, you know, she's been telling the, uh, light-hearted kitty stuff for years, and, you know, under obligation, and, uh, you know, finally she just decided to tell the, quote, true versions, and now she's on trial for, yeah, <laughs> for obscenity with these stories, I guess. So, yeah, I guess uh, freedom of expression wasn't really a thing back then in in the South, I guess, because that's where this takes place. Anyway, yeah, so while she's on trial, she tells the stories, and, yeah, again, they're, you know, pornographic retellings of Jack and the Beanstalk, Cinderella, and Little... Little Red Riding Hood, and I am not going to go into detail with what happens in those stories, but let's just say, uh, they're pretty messed up. Um, so, yeah, and, uh, while she tells these stories, uh, everybody in the courtroom gets all, uh, well, they get horny. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, they get horny, and then by the end they're all, you know, you know, they're all, uh, making love with each other, so, yeah. I think they might have, uh, hired a bunch of, uh, porno actors for the live-action segments, although, uh, um, 
Mother Goose herself is, first of all, played by a man, but, uh, yeah, the dude playing her is uh, Hal Smith, who I think I talked about a little before in my uh, Fantastic Planet review. Um, hold on. So, yeah, he, um, you know, he was on the Andy Griffith show, and he's also done a lot of voice roles in uh, some of the animated movies that I've covered so far, as well as some other animated movies that are coming up later, um, as well as cartoons, so, yeah, um, so, yeah, they were able to get a hold of him for this uh, movie. And if that's not enough, they also managed to get a hold of one of the greatest voice actors of all time, Frank Welker. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, he's, like, one of the voice actors. Like, he's, like, top three. Mel Blanc is definitely, like probably number one, but, like, Frank Welker's, like, at least in the top three, probably. Um, but anyway, uh, and I'd probably say that Hal Smith and Frank Welker are probably the best parts of the movie. Um, I guess the performers in general weren't too bad. Well, okay, I guess the other live actors during the courtroom sketches weren't very good. I mean, I'm Again, they're probably porno actors. But yeah, Hal Smith was entertaining his mother Goose, and, you know, his narrations were entertaining. You know, Frank Welker voices, like, the majority of all the, you know, characters, or at least, like, most of the male characters, and even a couple of the females, like the fairy godmother in the Cinderella story. Um... So, uh, yeah, the performers were all right, relatively speaking, um, but specifically Smith and Walker. But anyway, um, as for the movie itself, uh, it, it was terrible. This is hands down the worst movie I've reviewed so far. Like, oh god. Um, I mean, I'm not going to go into detail with the, uh, segments, but I will, you know, talk, well, I'll talk about some general stuff, but, uh, first of all, let's just say the Jack and the Beanstalk one is by far the, uh, most vulgar, and, yeah, it's kind of disgusting and, uh, crude and all kinds of offensive throughout, all this crazy stuff going on, and, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, uh, let's see, uh, Cinderella was relatively tame, I guess, I mean, I guess the beginning was a little nuts, but, uh, I don't know, down the line it was pretty tame compared to the other segments, and then Little Red Riding Hood, um, it's definitely not as over-the-top nuts as Jack and the Beanstalk was, but it's, uh, yeah, still, you know, disturbing in its own right, because, well, let's just say it's, uh, yeah, Red Riding Hood getting, uh, well, she's getting, uh, screwed over and over again by different, uh, dudes, and, uh, well, I will mention there's no, uh, wolf in the segment for some reason, but I guess they uh, tried to avoid bestiality, even though there's some uh, hints of that in the Jack and the Beanstalk segment, without giving too much away. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, and yeah, Red Riding Hood's not uh, heading to Grandma's house in this one. She's heading to a wedding, and uh, and I should probably just leave it at that. Like, I mean, this was mostly cringy during the 
Jack and the Beanstalk segment. I mean, the other two, by the time we got to them, I kind of knew what I was in for, so they weren't nearly as offensive. Yeah, the, the Jack and the Beanstalk one was definitely the worst part, and yeah. Um, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think what else is even worth saying. Like, well, there's not really much of a story. I mean, it's kind of just retelling the old fairy tales without, uh, or, you know, it's retelling them with all this sex. So, there's hardly anything to the story, and, uh, yeah, and, yeah, all the, uh, all this vulgar, obscene crap. <clears throat> it's hard to watch. Um, I mean, I guess some people might be turned on by it, but, yeah, that's all it really is, is a porno movie, and, uh, yeah, nothing more than that. I mean, at least, like, Fritz the Cat had, like, you know, you know, the Ralph Bakshi movies have, like, themes and commentaries they're touching on. And I did say in my review of, uh, King D-Word that, uh, you know, it was kind of refreshing that that movie wasn't trying to be anything more than just a silly, uh, you know, sex satire. But I think the thing about that movie is that it worked for, it worked as, you know, naughty satire in its own right. You know, it wasn't good by any means, but, you know, it's, I don't know, I think it just did a better job with the uh, themes it was handling, but, uh, you know, uh, it's very complicated. I mean, if I had to pick, I mean, I think King D Word was, like, a little funnier, I guess. I mean, I guess this movie had, uh, you know, moments, um, you know, I kind of chuckled a bit at the, uh, happily ever after segment at the end, or, you know, the, uh, happily ever after gag at, at the end of, uh, the Cinderella segment, but, yeah, aside from that, the humor is mostly just reliant on sex jokes and, you know, all sorts of other vulgar crap. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, I think King D Word worked better as a satire film. Um, I mean, it's definitely not, uh, this movie, to be fair, is definitely, uh, more pleasing for, you know, <laughs> the, uh, pervy eyes, because, uh, you know, most of the ladies you see, you know, expose themselves are, you know, attractive, but, uh, whereas King D-Word, it's mostly, like, this old, ugly witch assaulting this dwarf, you know, but, uh, I don't know. It's hard to really explain it. Um, but yeah, I th either way, this just... <laughs> yeah, like, within the first ten minutes, I was already uh, asking, what the hell am I watching? Why am I watching this? Aside from the fact that I'm obligated to because of this series. Um, yeah, it's... It's it's terrible. Ugh. Gross. I can't. Yeah. I just can't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I personally would not recommend it, but, uh, I guess if you're that, you know, horny, I guess, if you're that, uh, curious, then... I guess I won't stop you. Um, but yeah, me personally, I give this movie a 2 out of 10. 
So congratulations, uh, Once Upon a Girl, you have the lowest Mash It review rating to date. Or, you know, lowest Mash It and Smash It rating to date. Um, you know, I have seen worse movies than this, but uh, this is still the worst movie I've covered so far for this series. Um, I will say, at the very least, the, re the main thing keeping it from being rated a 1, which is as low as I can go, is the fact that, uh, you know, it knows what it is. It's just, yeah, a very vulgar porno movie with, you know, no, you know, no story, no, uh, nothing. Um, yeah, I'd say King D Word was the better, uh, pornographic fairy tale movie, but, uh, well, actually, it was the better, uh, comedy, whereas I guess this has, uh, more pleasing things to look at, but, uh, yeah. And, uh, also, uh, yeah, this is an even worse, uh, Mother Goose movie than, uh, that, uh, Rankin Bass film I covered. Um, yeah, just terrible really terrible um yeah knows at the very least the movie knows that it's you know vulgar and uh and i guess maybe there's one or two laughs here and there but aside from that and it's got some good performers i don't know a few little redeeming factors but not enough to pull it in, up any higher than two out of ten so yeah um, so I guess if there's anything else I feel I need to add, I'll put it in the comments. Um, but yeah, I hated it, and I, uh, yeah, I <laughs> needed a shower after I watched it, I guess. So yeah, I, I took a shower after it. <laughs> Not necessarily because I watched the movie, but anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm going on and on, so, I'm rambling here, so, uh, yeah, I'll just leave it at that for now, Mash It and Smash It signing off.